Lam Bui, second lieutenant, Vietnam. Lam served with the 85th Division, 5th Company of the Army Republic of Vietnam as a ranger. Lam has an amazing, compelling story from his perspective, being Vietnamese and fighting with the American forces. 1.6 million South Vietnamese troops were killed in Vietnam, something that many people don't know about, but Lam's going to tell that story. We lost 58,000 troops in the United States, so in comparison, they lost a whole lot more, and yet nobody really knows that. So we're going to let Lam talk about that today. And I'm really proud to have interviewed him on July 5th, 2007 in Phoenix, Arizona, right after the day after our premiere of Vietnam Remembered. He even spoke to the people in attendance that night, including the Vietnam veterans. And there's such a camaraderie between the two. It's great to see. So I'm happy to share the story. And John Nguyen, I want to thank you again for sponsoring a story. This is a powerful story, you being Vietnamese and sponsoring Lam's story. Thank you, John. I love you for it, brother. You're such a patriot of this country, and I'm going to interview you someday, too. We're going to share your story with the world. So, John, again, I salute you and I thank you. If you'd like to sponsor one of the many stories I've recorded over the years, folks, I would encourage you to do so. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears has gone into this project. The interviews are done, and now I want to share the stories one by one with the world. And you can be a part of that. So if you want more information, there's information in the video description and in the comment section of this video. So I want you to share this story, subscribe to this channel, let's keep this thing going, folks. And I'm really proud to share with you the South Vietnamese story from Lam Bui, the first that I've done in my series. And I think it'll go a long way. And Lam, God bless you, sir. Thank you for serving your country. Thank you for working with our country. And we're fighting for freedom, folks. Thank you. God bless you. Certain uh, grade and certain class, and then, uh, and, but in 1968, that's a big draft. Right after that, Tet defense, right, the communist attack all over that city, and, and uh, after that, uh, the draft pick up everybody for not, uh, and then 69, 70, and 71, 72 is a big one too. Just about right after all the Allies withdraw. Um, not just the uh, United States, we have uh, uh, South Korea, Philippines, uh, Australia, uh, Switzerland. It's total 11 or 12 countries It's an ally came to Vietnam. And it's helped the uh, uh, South Vietnamese to fight for freedom. Try to just focus on me, okay? Oh, okay. I know you want to look at him, but try to focus <laughs> for the camera, because it looks weird when you're looking over that way. So. Okay. Okay, so how old were you when you were drafted? I got drafted, I'm 20. Yes, 20 yes, old. 19 going to 20, yes. Did you know you would be drafted? Yes, I've been informed I'd be drafted, just like anybody else, and uh, I decided to uh, uh, join the uh, uh, Vietnamese Ranger, a volunteer to the South Vietnamese Ranger. So is this like a, an elite army? It's, it's, yes, yes. You volunteer to the Airborne, you volunteer to the Marine, and to, to the Special Force, and also to the Ranger. Yes. And, uh, well, did you feel a sense of duty to, 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 to serve your country at that time? Yes, I feel like I have to serve um, as my, my country, even uh, my particular case, my family can influence um, to my draft tea, but I decided to win. And I, uh, up until now, I never regret it. And it's the best time of my life, and the best time is because I'm served. Mm -hmm. Even the outcome is not like we expected. It's so stung for the outcome, but as you know, Sometimes life is never fair, and uh, it's so suddenly, it's so quick for the end of the Vietnam War like that. But uh, 
Tell me what happened uh, in Vietnam historically, um, the North and the South and the division and then uh, why the Americans became involved. As I grew up and understand that uh, the South Vietnam is a, uh, is been a free country since uh, uh, the peace uh, in in the in the Geneva uh, 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 Treaty mm -hmm. in 1954 divide the North and the South, and the South is an independent, free country, and uh, from then. We, uh, we defend uh, uh, the free country. The North being backed up by the, all the communism in the world, the South fought it by himself for a while until 19, I don't know exactly, until 61, 63. And the freedom country, I mean, the freedom world start to back up the South after the South being, being pulled back so many times. We fought it uh, way back from 1954 Again, the whole block of communism. And then 1960, 60, 61, the Allies started to come in and help the South Vietnamese, just like the North and the South Korea way back in 1950 and to 1953. And the South Vietnam, we fought it. Uh, we, we, we just defense ourselves. And, uh, what, how were your thoughts about the Americans when they became involved? Were you, were, you, were you happy about that? Or, I mean, obviously you were. I mean, to have the Americans come over and get involved, was that part of the plan? Or, or did you have any control on the Americans? Why, why did the Americans get involved, I guess is my question. Well, because the, the North being backed up with the whole block of the communists, you know, communist Cuba, communist China, communist Russia, so the freedom war helped the South Vietnam. That's the most under, I understand it that way. And the war is escalated so big at, at, at that time. So before the communists just back up with the China and limbi with Russia, and then they push the South Vietnam. And then when the South Vietnam is need help, and then that's, that's what the, the, the freedom war come in. I don't want to say the United States alone, but majority later on is always is our country went to different soil, different land to help other country, to help the people they cannot defend themselves. Just like we, I say we because I am a US citizen now, we went to liberate France. We, we went to different country to help, help Europe too. So people didn't see that, but that is the truth, no matter what we say. And the U.S. soldiers, U.S. people help other countries, help other people uh, defend themselves under dictator, under communism. Um, Some people think that uh, we, the, in the United States shouldn't have gotten involved in Vietnam, but you don't believe that, do you? I don't believe that because that's propaganda. Uh, uh, because as people say Vietnam War is the is is a, um, internal war. Uh, Vietnam War is a uh, is a is a guerrilla war. It is not. Uh, the communists fought with everything they have. It's conventional war. It's tang, orderly. They have a better, much superior equipment than the South have. Uh, too bad we've been, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, control or balance out. Because we don't have, every time, the South Vietnamese don't have an M16 until after the 1968, until the, the, the 68 defense. Only a couple elite uh, uh, troops to have that. The South Vietnamese don't have that. We still use a carbine uh, uh, and the uh, uh, Garan M1. Only the elite troop have the M16 and 68. So we always two, three steps behind the enemy. They have more superior power than we have. 
Were they getting their weapons from the Russians or the Chinese? Or? Of course, of course, yes. Uh, all the weapons come from Russia and China and, uh, and uh, no, even in the, the, the uh, 1972, um, they surprised us with that many T-54, PT-76 uh, and all of the tank and all of the uh, gun they have, all the big gun they have. So you're a, you're a ranger? Yes, I'm an army ranger, yes. Did you work with the American uh, army or who did you work with? I mean, I am draft late 1971, so um, I work very little with the advisor when they came, but mostly the advisors stay with the company. Uh, some of them stay with the battalion, and I know and I work with some of them, but not much. You know. But mostly, mostly uh, the advisors uh, work with all of the elite troop. And, uh, and all of the uh, all of the division. What was your rank? I'm a second lieutenant. Okay, and your divi we were a division, a squad, infantry regiment. What's the group you're with over there? I I I with the battalion, and then uh, uh, 86 battalion, and then after that uh, is uh, is uh, the fifth company. So you're with the 86 battalion and the fifth company. Yes. Okay. It's a company, have a tree battalion. And they, are you called an army ranger or what's the actual title? Or just ranger? Just ranger. Okay. Yes. And are you part of the Republic of Vietnam? I mean... The Republic of Vietnam. RBN or ABR? How do you, how do you classify? We, do Americans say ARVIN or what, what is that? What? The ARVIN stands for the, the, the armed force of, of, of the South Vietnam, of Vietnam. Of the South Vietnam. But uh, the ranger is, is to us. Yes. Now, who are you fighting? Who's your enemy? Communists. It's, it's, it's communists. They invaded from the, from the north. So, do you classify Viet Cong, North Vietnamese, or just communists? To me, I believe it after 1968, we no longer Viet Cong. After 1968, the majority of Viet Cong has been wipe out. Mostly after 78, uh, 68, 70, we see all of them is NVA, the no, uh, the no Vietnamese, the no army, the no armed force. But who were the Viet Cong? From the south? People from the south? The people from the south been betrayed, been lied, been say, liberate your your, your country. Mm -hmm. And that's why the propaganda from there. That's why the Western um, uh, don't quite understand it, you know, and they say we are civil war. But it's, it's totally wrong. Even after the, after the, the, the Vietnam War in 1975, two months later, it's no longer anything existed of Viet Cong at all. Completely no, no flag of that recognized. And they just use a communist flag. So as an army, you're a ranger, you're a second lieutenant, you said? Yes. Do you have a group of men that you are commanding? Yes. How about how many men in your platoon or company, or how do you? It's uh, 30, 36. 40 sometime. Can you tell me about some of the patrols you went out on and the combat that you engaged uh, in Vietnam? It's um, sometimes it's, it's, it's try to forget. It's, it's hard. But I just have to do the of the soldier, of the young officer, just like any, any troop. We went out, we're searching, we find, and uh, we destroy, we kill. Uh, most of the time, we've been protecting village, small village. Ranger have been uh, moving everywhere. Anywhere when the communists uh, attack and run over a couple um, uh, village, uh, a small uh, hill or something, we've been called to take it back. Uh, that's what our job. And, uh, 
like I say, um, 1972 in Unlock, mm. it's, it's, uh, something you don't want to talk about. Mm. As any combat soldier, you just have to live with that. And then uh, it's the main thing is the, the outcome is so hard, so bitter. Uh, you just try to forget, and that's it. Well, I think a lot of people, though, like in my film, they need to be shocked. They need to realize what war is and why we have our freedoms today and a lot of people a lot of younger people don't understand that so and i'm not asking you to go into great detail but as far as the combat i mean was it worse than the, what the americans went through was it about the same or was it not so bad and 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 are you fighting up close artillery small arms fire what kind of combat are you having why is uh, why is bad why is terrible why is survivor. Um, to me, with the platoon leader, with the battalion operation, we don't have a superior power like the American have. We don't have a help like we used to before 1973, in 72, when we still have the advisor to help us to call the Air Force. Uh, called the B-52. Later, 73, 74, 75, is very tough. Sometimes the commander, officer, gave an order. You have to see the purple of the eye before you can shoot that close. And then, um, but, it's, but it's our war. The tactic we use is different, plus the limit supply we have. We just have to be real close. Uh, combat to hand-to-hand -hand is common. And uh, at one time, we connected together, the, the, the communists connect together. And then after 15, 20 minutes, uh, they blow the whistle to pull back. We pull back. Next day, four of my men, uh, uh, the, the recon, the front group, three o'clock in the morning, when the sun started to come up, three, four o'clock in the morning, and they yell, don't shoot, don't shoot. Three of my men come back with the bamboo, uh, with chopstick bamboo, they break in half, they punch right into the eye, they send back. That's the first time I'm crying. I stand up, I say, why? Why? I've been trained to become a, a warrant officer and then become a first lieutenant. I've been trained with everything to the modern country, to the freedom country. My learning is mostly my superior officer went to for banning uh, and learn and come back. I never get trained like hate and hate and kill enemy. I never been taught to train like that. Even we caught them. We treat them very humanely. We, we treat them right. And some of my classmates now and look back and say, Lum, you, 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 you're lucky you left in 1975. We in the real education came, but it's, we don't learn anything. We not, they not educated anything. We in a prison. And sometimes I look back and I wish I'm gone. I'm dying so I don't have to live in that prison like that, or oh, I wish I killed them. It's not the revenge, but when you to the bottom of the life like that, you think how six months ago, a year ago, you've been treat the enemy, you know, uh, give to them whatever necessary they need. And when they are wounded, you, you give them. But why they treat our soldier, 
our people like that. And I got out to see my three men come back with the dry blood in their eye. And as 22 year old, I cry. I stand there and I cry. And I have to hide my cry. I have to cover up so the soldier didn't see it. And then the captain walked up and tapped on my shoulder. I said, Lum, don't do that. Get the men in and take care of them. I'm sorry. You're fine. So you um, are on, how many months are you out in the field in combat in Vietnam? Many months or? We don't have a, the come back and relax. We all the way out there. Yeah, uh, we go to the base and we rest. The base is, is like we have a responsibility to cover um, two hill, three hill, and our responsibility to cover that. But wherever, whenever they need, they can pick up the ranger and send them to different location to capture that the other hill back or do something. Uh, we always on patrol. Uh, we don't have, after I come back in this country, I mean, I and learn about the relaxation of the American habit, uh, which is nice. But, uh, but at that time, we don't compare either because we didn't know. We didn't know. When you out there with your troop, with your men, you forget about the family. All you know is just people surround you people around you, and then uh, your camaraderie is, is, is your friend, your, your, your buddy. You live with them, you eat with them, you sleep with them, days in, day out. And uh, I had my uh, commander officer. Um, he got married in 1971. And after the war in 1975, totally he stayed with his newlywed, his, his wife, uh, less than 40 days. From 19, and he's a major. And he got, he's, he captured and spent 13 years in prison. So, uh, so now you talked about helicopters. You showed me your little book. You said you've been you took that book with you and the helicopters and uh, in the mud. Describe some of the, the air assaults or the combat assaults that you went on. And were these Americans with the South Vietnamese or were they just South Vietnamese with pilots and landing zones and all that? Tell me about the just, story. just Just the South Vietnamese, the South Vietnamese, Vietnamese pilot. Uh, except in, in 1972 in, in Anh Lộc. Uh, we have a lot of American uh, medivac helping a lot, but later on, you know, after 73, 74, 75, strictly is, is South Vietnamese uh, pilot. I have that book with me since I'm high school. It's on my birthday and my uh, sweetheart in high school, and she gave it to me on my birthday. And I went to uh, cadet and yet training and I always have that book with me until even now and uh, it's just it's just some souvenir but in that book I wrote it uh, all of my memoir and uh, well, tell me about a combat assault or what kind of mission that and what kind of helicopters you were using for these missions we use I don't know much about a, a helicopter a UE or something like that and um, I'm not good on the helicopter. All I know is, is on a ground troop, if you hear the sound of helicopter, you know somebody know you there. Somebody recognize that you in that ground. But that luxury, we don't have it in 1974 and 75, because up until now, I learned that we don't have 80, 60% of our Air Force grounded. And uh, it, it's so hard, but you don't know. You don't know when you're there. Plus, uh, a young officer, you just have to do the duty. And then you don't have time to thinking about that. Uh, your man, 
you, I can receive when helicopter come out and drop me six, seven young soldier, four o'clock. My duty is when the helicopter take off to run to them, get their serial number, put in a book and tell them, stay there, go with me tonight, stay in that trench, lay there until tomorrow and we talk. Sometime tomorrow too late. And, uh, but, uh, Did you go on a lot of missions in helicopters or just a few of them? Oh yes, quite, quite a few, quite a few. Did you mm. go into landing zones that were hot where they're firing at you? Oh that? yes, yes, yes. Well, but, tell, tell me about a couple that you remember where, where people hit getting off, uh, did you, and then what happened when you got on the ground, what did you do? So tell me about the helicopters and going in on a mission. At, at one time, all you want to see is they, f they shot two helicopters, they blow up two helicopters in front of you. All you wish is just land. Just get me on the ground with my men, and then whatever happened, we see. We don't want to be blow up on the air. We see two helicopters blow out in the air, and all we want to see is just land us on the ground, and we, we just hang in there with helicopter, no door, nothing, you know machine gun shoot, but we, we can't do anything. We are ground troop. We want to land two feet on the, on the ground. And then whatever that, we, we will figure out the weight. And uh, Larry, it just, it just something, it, it's, it's to the South Vietnamese soldier, we live with that every day. We don't know when we went home. We don't know when we're going to have a pass to go home. Um, but the main thing is, I don't know about that. I don't know because I live just, just everybody around me, same thing. So up until 19, the end of 1974, I have a pass to went home. That's the first time I asked my mom when I went back to Saigon. And I, first time I, I told my mom, I said, Mom, don't expect me to come home anymore because I don't like Saigon. I hate Saigon. And I, I don't think I'm going to go back to Saigon anymore. And she, she asking me why. Because it's, I, I'm up there with my soldier, with my troop, with my people. And I, I, I just don't feel like it. It's Saigon is just something I, I dislike it. And, and it, it just, it's just, I told my mom, maybe next time when a jeep stop in front of the house, you may receive the bad news. She's yelling at me right away. She said, don't you ever say that to me. I said, mom, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. After three and a half year in the combat, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm relate with my people, relate with my friend. And up to now, you know, I came to the great country like that. Now I look back, everything went through, you know, why I'm so lucky. I left in 1975, don't live a day with the communists. All of my friend, all of my classmates, you know, spent six years, second lieutenant, first lieutenant. In the combat unit, they usually get six to eight years easy. And I'm lucky I don't have a day on that. And uh, sometimes talk to friends and they say, sometimes I don't know what to share with you anymore because you, know, you, you didn't go through. And that is true. That is true. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm left out. No. Well, now tell me this, Lam, I'm still about the battles that you fought. I mean, with the Americans, I've talked to many of them. They tell me about some of the combat, um, small arms, artillery fire. Um, were you, you had control of a platoon, is that what you did? Yes. And you got out in the field, and did you guys hold a line? Did you advance? Was it sniper fire? What kind of combat engagements did you have? Were they big, small? Did they happen every day? It, it won't happen every day, but when it happens, it'll be three, four, five days in a row, two weeks, sometimes a week in a row. And then, uh, yes, Larry, I, 
you, you like to drill into that and then to know about combat. War is hell. War is terrible. Um, it just, it just, it's just, I don't know how to share because it's, I'm, 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 I'm the type is, is just take inside and just swallow it. Um, Did it bother you after the war? It's bothered me after the war. It's bothered me so much. When we, we talk like this, we talk about, you know, we're drilling on combat. Uh, any combat, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, or even Iraq, uh, Iran. Uh, I mean, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan. How do we, how do we talk about combat? How would, how would you define combat? You've already said it, but your definition is it? Survive, survive, survival. I mean, you do everything to, when you responsibility with your men, you make sure your men there, you make sure you hold the ground, and uh, you make sure you, you do whatever necessary, even kill them. Are you trained to kill, or is that something you, I mean, you're not born with that, so are you, are you, is your training good for you to, to have to kill if you have to do that, or? We have to do that, yes, yes. When, when the first 15 seconds of the engagement of the, the, the operation, you may have afraid. You have time to think about it. Okay, what happened? Is this time, is my time yet? Is this time? Is what happened, and uh, so you just don't know. You just don't know. But the f first five, ten, fifteen seconds, and you just automatically merge it in. You in the war. You fight cliff after cliff. How many cliff you got left? You just have to survive. Your men, the radio, call them. Where are we? How many of them? Yeah. Usually, we know we they they our men and us, and they set up everything. They have the orderly, and they set up. They point for us to 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 to, to lure us to in to engage with them. But uh, we we train we train to defense. We train to kill, and I think we do much better than job. It just, it just, Larry, it just, it's just the outcome of the war. It's so hard. It's so hard. How can you say you brave, you fought good, you proud, when you directly, you lose the war. You lose a battle. The war is still going on with us. We still do whatever we can to help to free Vietnam. Um, um. Were you fighting for your country? Like, you know, I asked the Americans, did you fight for your country? Um, did you have a purpose for fighting? What, what was your purpose for fighting over there? It's, we defense. We've been attacked from the North. The North invade us. The communists invade us. We learn in high school, we learn in the, uh, in the cadet school, is we are free country, we are free to talk. We, we, but this is the communist, and to the book we learn when we in high school and we in uh, uh, elementary communist doctrine, we learn a little bit about. So we know we know we have to defend our country. When I'm young, 1963, 64, in 1968, when the when the test defense, I saw all of that on television. I saw that I you know, uh, 16, 17. I learned that on the television, how the communists and my my mom from the north moved to the south. She tell how the communists treat the people. So that's what we 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 learned. And then when I got called to draft, I'm I'm served. I'm served with no question to ask. Like I mentioned the other day, you know, to retrospect to look back in 1968, 69, 70, 71, and I got draft. What happened if the, the ally, the US soldier, the Australian, the Philippine, 
in my upper generation never joined into the war, I probably, you know, singing the communist song, uh, Uncle Hong, uh, Uncle Ho Chi Minh song way back in 60, 67 or 68. So I understand the basic fundamental of the liberty and the democratic because the servicemen, the, the, the U.S. soldier, the free world helped the South Vietnam. I guess some of my questions about combat aren't just to drill you, but it's like I think about World War II, the fighting there, the fighting in Korea, and how was the fighting in Vietnam different if it was different, and then just thinking about all the stories that I've heard. So um, I'm trying to imagine you, if you've got an M16, if, you've, if you're leading your troops into battle, or if they're uh, like coming against you, like an onlock, was that a major offensive? Um, was that you pushing them or are they pushing you? Unlock is a small city. It's only a, a mile and a half, square, a, a square mile and a half. And the communists took over un, uh, Unlock in the first uh, 72 hour. And the uh, 18th Division and the Army Ranger, the Airborne, the, uh, the South Vietnamese Special Force, we all went in to take it back, but uh, that's the hell, that's, that's the battle in four months, that small square mile and a half, every day receive 10,000, I mean 10,000, between 10 and 15,000, utterly every day, every single day. Um, You're asking me how war, war, and war, how's the battle? Um, like I say, um, we, don't have, we don't have the luxury of the U.S. Armed Force have, but we have to do the best we know how, it's whatever tech. Even sometimes you cry and turn your man over and get a couple clip out of him. Uh, get whatever he have left. And sometimes you know you're completely out, your men completely out, but you know six or 15 of the other ranger lay up front of you, he tried to get up there to pull them back. They already dead, but get the ammunition because you, you're completely out. And you wait for the, another attack of them to come in. And you don't know when your supply come up next, or you have it or not. What about, um, well, as far as the, the helicopters, that was your mode of transportation. That's how you got in and out. Were you using helicopters before the Americans came over and then 65 with the helicopters? I don't know. Okay. I'm not in the service at that time. I don't think we have that much. Maybe the big uh, GMC truck is what we use whatever necessary to transport the troop. So what about the communists? Were they shocked about the helicopters? Did they understand what was happening? How do you think they felt about the helicopters? Because they were used a lot. Do you think it was difficult for them, uh, for the helicopters to come over? I believe it's difficult for them for the first years, let's say 1968, 69, but after that, they got so modern weapon and to shut down, to shoot down the helicopter. And later on, 1974, 75, helicopter pilot, it's just, it's not like easy like fly, like used to be anymore. Because as they have a, um, all kind of, you know, rocket, to, to, to shoot, even us surprised us in 1972 when they have a um, T-54 or PT-76. We don't have a, uh, uh, we don't have a tow, a T-O-W, we don't have that until later to shoot with a tank. So we all wait two, three steps behind. Um, helicopter in, in, in the Vietnam War is is a very big big help. 
But nowadays, I think every helicopter is too slow now. Yeah. Yeah. Were there a lot of casualties? Um, I know the Americans lost a lot, but you lost even more. I mean, your armies, and I mean, do you have a number of how many people? The South Vietnamese got over 1.6 million soldiers died in the Vietnam War. That's something not too many people hear about it or, or, or want to ask questions about it. Uh, as, as another thing, uh, all we see it here, any documentary we see is, is American fight with the communists. What about the South Vietnamese? What about the local people? I came with you today, I don't know you put that on a, your film. I'd like you to sit down with my ranger, my South Vietnamese ranger, airborne. I can sit up for you in California, because the majority of Vietnamese live in California. Translation, that we can get it for you too. Those people can speak Vietnamese and translate in English for you. But the South Vietnamese got over a million and a half soldier die. Nobody know about that. When you read through the book I just gave to you, not just American went to Vietnam. We, the South, fought the, with the communists way before any freedom country, any ally come to help us. That's a basic thing, you know, uh, why Vietnam war booming. And all we see in the documentary or television, it's a U.S. soldier. I can, I can set up with you right here in Phoenix, six, seven, or maybe 10 American advisor to talk about how the South Vietnamese fight. That's something, please, you know, well, do, I, I do. do it. it. Just, I was disappointed I didn't get more people now, but it's probably because the holiday. Yes, yeah. yes. But still, it's important, but we can talk uh, about this later. It's then. so important for the freedom were okay. to know how the South Vietnamese fought. Yeah. Well, I want to do that. We'll talk about that later. Yes. Nothing yes. more we need to do, but let's finish up this interview now. But, uh, and I agree with you, everything you're saying. I totally agree with that. Um, now, you said over a million South Vietnamese were killed. Yes. How, how many the communists do you think died in, in Vietnam? I think the communists, because they always never tell the truth. That's, that's the communists. They never tell the truth. I think communists got over three million people. Over three million. The South Vietnam, South Vietnamese, over a million and a half. And uh, it's, it just, it just, you know, we have 56,000 men and women killed in Vietnam here. The Australian, the the, the Filipino, but the, but the South Vietnamese, we have over, over a million and a half soldier at one time, always a million and a half. And during the war, uh, I think we got killed by over a million and a half too. Is that a documented statistic? Yes, that's a document, wow. yes, yes. So, we're, so obviously you lost friends that were wounded and killed in Vietnam. We lost friends. A lot of them, a lot of them. And were they big battles, though? I mean, that's again getting back to combat. Were they? It wasn't just a, a little bit of engagement. These were big battles. That there were machine guns, there were small arms, artillery, artillery, air, and everything. And unlocked, in unlock, the communists lost forty thousand men. The South Vietnamese lost about eighteen to twenty thousand men in unlock. Nobody mentioned about that. All we heard is just. Unlock battle. Who fought? Who fought in Unlock? It's the South Vietnamese. And what about Hue? You hear about Hue? You hear about Da Nang? Yeah. It's, it's the American fought in Hue, but uh, four company of the Ranger. Each company have three battalion. Each battalion about uh, four hundred to five hundred men. So we fought that battle of Hue, airborne, Marine, South Vietnamese Marine in uh, 
Da Nang in 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 uh, uh, in Hue, South Vietnamese Marine died six thousand in like fifteen days. Why why so many casualties? Were you not equipped, or were they so much stronger the communists, or were you guys stronger? In well, that's the battle in Hue. The communists way in 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 the I Corps. The communists got killed about sixty sixty thousand. No document talking about that. We sit and we see why, why just mention American fought with the communists. Nothing about the South Vietnamese. That's why I I don't understand. I understand. It's our the the U.S. the U.S. and and. And the ally come over to help different country, help Vietnam, South Korea, Laos, and Cambodia, and uh, help the French in World War II. You know, liberate Europe in World War II. You know, but nobody talk about uh, French. They fought it too. The South Vietnamese fought it too. So why we don't know? I, I can answer that. I guess because we don't know. Yes. I didn't know. Yes, that's, yeah, that's I'm true. Learning, I'm learning a lot about what you're saying. Um, now, uh, you saw the documentary Tuesday night. Uh, yes. And I realize what you're saying as far as that, that, but do you think that, did you like the documentary the other night, or were there parts you didn't like or liked? Or? Honestly, with you, uh, honestly with you, Larry, I don't like it. I don't like to talk about war. I like we focus into uh, camaraderie, fighting, uh, uh, why we soldier, we understand. You know? I'd be more comfortable to sit to the, on the table with a Vietnam veteran than anybody else. Because I know they came to help I know um, what they've been through. They understand what I've been through. Do we talk about war? We talk about battlefield? No, we don't want to talk about the battlefield. Yeah. Deep down in my heart, I want to, to, to see what we can do for Vietnam right now. No matter what. People say, Lum, did you know Vietnam changing a lot? It's beautiful building, it's nice, this and that. But to me, it's still a communist country. It's still a dictator control that. So we, as a soldier, when I sit down with the Vietnam veteran, the American veteran, is, is, is my brother in, in, in the fighting combat. The job is not finished. The job is not done. You cannot send a professional people on out of field and call them back, call them back home when the job is not done. You cannot, you cannot do that. It's something unaccomplished there in their heart. Well, when you talked the other night, you got up and talked to the Vietnam veterans. What would you, and you may say it again now for the camera, but what, what would your message be to the Vietnam veterans? I mean, you thanked them and you, you gave them a salute. Tell me what you would say to the Vietnam veterans today. I grew up in the town. When they came to Vietnam, I'm still a young man. I finished high school. I'd be able to finish high school because of them. The basic fundamental of I, of I understand about the liberty and the democratic because it's my upper generation and the U.S. soldier, the, the ally people went, came to my country. So I'd be able to enjoy and to learn. When I'm in high school, they are out of the bush, they are in the rural country, they are out of small village to protect my country, so I can finish high school. And I will never forget that. You and I know high school is the best time. College is the best time. But that's why I always, in my heart, 
to say thanks to the Vietnam veteran. It's, it's, it's my generation, or my younger generation, um, a, a couple class older than, than my generation, we always appreciate what they came, what they done. Yeah. Well, what did that mean to you then tonight, to have that opportunity to speak to them and then tell me about the salute you gave. What were you thinking about when you did that? When I salute to the Vietnam veteran as a, as a camaraderie, it's that those people, as people, live and understand what the soldier went through. I'd be honored and proud to see them any, any day, any time on the street. If I find out they are Vietnam veteran, I'll come over, stick my hand out and say, May I shake hands with you? Thank you. Thank you for service in Vietnam. And you don't know how much this means to my generation. Because of you, you know, I understand the basic of the de democratic. We see now our young men and women go to Iraq, Afghanistan. Maybe us sit here and say, why? It don't, it's, not, it's not our fight. But at least at that period of time, we give them a freedom. We give the women, we give young men over there to understand the free, to understand the basic fundamental of liberty. And they can go out and play, the woman can take the veil off and speak freely. Maybe we don't know. Just like the South Vietnam after 75, you know. I wish some protester raised some voice, you know, after 1975. 1975 to 1985 to 95 to 2005, no protester, nobody looked back and say, what happened to Vietnam from 75 to 85? People, they close the bamboo curtain, close the, the iron door, the revenge massacre. You see Cambodia, it's killing field. What about Vietnam? Nobody mentioned about that. What about the war protester? Where are you? Where are, where are you when, when the Vietnam closed down? Mom, tell me what freedom means to you, and tell me about the price of freedom. Something as like English I learn, uh, fundamental thing, freedom is not free. You see it every day. You see like propaganda, repeat, repeat, repeat. Freedom is not free. But to me, it is not free. You have to pay for your blood. You have to pay for your sweat. You have to back it up your soldier, your man. You have to burn them up, find a way to get them out, get them home. Freedom is not free. Freedom is something everybody has to sacrifice. You know, we live here in this free country. That means so much to me. It's so much to me is freedom. Freedom does mean I can sit here, talk to you, express my opinion, even wrong, even say long you BS, you just, but that's, that's me, that's freedom. Freedom must mean I can, I can say a lot of things wrong, maybe one or two things right. Freedom must mean you can get up, you can do freely business, you don't have to afraid, you don't have to think people look you in the back and people report you tonight. Uh, whatever you say wrong, that's freedom. I came in this country in 24, 24 years old. All I know is just freedom. I don't live one day with communists. I'm afraid to go back to that country. And that's so I know. That's so I know. I've been taught. I've been worked freely. 
I get up anytime I want, and people can tell me, okay, Lum, you can applaud now. You can, okay, so you have flapped your hand. I don't want somebody to tell me to do that. I don't want to get up, and I don't want to raise my flag if I disagree with that flag, you know. Vietnam people, Vietnamese people, it has to do all of that now. When they told you to applaud, you must applaud, or you will disappear tonight. Tell me about the American flag, what that means and represents to you. The American flag is, is the flag of freedom. So do the South Vietnamese flag. The North Vietnamese escaped from the North to Vietnam looking for the American flag and the South Vietnamese flag way back then. Yeah. The Vietnamese, South Vietnamese flag and the, the American flag now represent freedom. That's it. Yeah. The American soldier, the ally, the freedom country went to different land, different soil, went to Vietnam, went to France, went to uh, different country, went to Europe, went to Afghanistan, went to Iraq. It's not for that flag, for that local, for the uh, to liberate Iraq, to help Afghanistan people. But that flag, when they raise up, that means freedom. That means a free country is here. You can be free with us while we're here. But when we left, we don't know what happened to you. That's why I'm so grateful to have in my heart, you know, this two flag. And... Uh, that is freedom. That is freedom. You, you talk to any veteran, no matter what, what era they're in, you know, soldier no freedom much better than anybody else. What was the hardest thing for you in Vietnam during the war? What was the hardest thing you had to do? The hardest thing for me when the battle over, I have to face with their family. I have to pray with their wife, their brother, their sister, their children to come back. That's, that's the hardest thing because we live in the, next to them. We have to see them every day. And when you see the wife go to the office of, of that company or uh, battalion office to claim for the death of their father, their husband, you just so hard, you know, so hard to see that, so hard to have to go through that. Usually I'm, I'm hiding, I'm, I'm, I'm walk away. That's the harder thing. Are you proud that you're a Vietnam veteran? I am very proud. I am so proud to be a veteran, a Vietnam veteran. I'm so proud to serve my country. I'm so proud to serve again together with the uh, Vietnam veteran, the U.S. Uh, soldier in Vietnam. What do you think Long our country should know, should learn about Vietnam? That's hundred billion dollars question right there. What we should learn about Vietnam. After Vietnam, how many other country in the world trust us? After we left Vietnam like that. And then never mention about the South Vietnamese soldier at all. And then less than 10 years, 10 years, and then another 10 years, we got two presidents, one Democratic, one rep Republican, went back to visit Vietnam, pretend like nothing happened at all. Pretend like 56,000 of men and women, U.S., you know, sacrificed in Vietnam for the, for the 
for the freedom. Nothing, nothing happened at all. And then, uh, no, no, no documentary, nothing talking about how the South Vietnamese soldier fight. And even a president mentioned this, the South Vietnam never fight. That's why they fell. Don't do that. Don't do that to those people. He hurting so bad, you know. And what happened to Vietnam? Now, you know, we pretend like nothing happened at all. The job is not finished. The battle is over, but the war for free Vietnam is still continues. And it still continues until the Vietnam is no longer dictator, it's no lo longer communist. People say, communist doesn't exist anymore. Dictator take over, mafia take over, corruption take over. Before they may have an ideology to, to come to the South to liberate the South Vietnamese because they're under empire of U.S. or, 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 or something. And they lie, they lie, they lie to their own people. They lie, they lie so much to their own people. And then now, you know, the freedom world look the other way, like nothing happened to the South. That's totally wrong. You, you, you should make a, a, a documentary about that to let people know, to let you know, I wish, I pray, you know, my English is, but I, I just have my heart to have CBS or whoever sit here and see, you know, and listen to you and I talking about this and share with them and to, to tell, what about the South Vietnamese people? You know, it's tear in my eye. Okay, Lam, right into the camera, salute please.